Moose and probably the four or five other people who will probably watch this. Moose, I liked your segment very much and here is mine. I apologize for the delay. I was busy having shisha. <clears throat> and thinking about it. Anyway, um, I apologize in advance for my tendency to ramble and the use of multi-syllable words to pretend to sound smart. I'll try to keep this as short and clear as I can. I'm going to be talking today about the myth of the oppressed Muslim woman. Let me just clarify, as one must do with, the, with this disclaimer, that I am not saying that there are no people in the world who are oppressed and forced to conform to other people's ideas of how they should live their lives. I'm not saying this at all. However, I am saying that we need to be cautious when we create monoliths of entities such as Islam and oppressed Muslim women. First of all, there is no one single entity such as Muslim woman. The set of beliefs and practices categorized as Islam by communities and individuals who identify as Muslims vary from city to city, let alone from country to country. And what may be one person's idea of devotion and duty to the God that they believe in is not going to be another's, though they both might identify as Muslim. Second of all, Muslim woman. There are many women around the world who identify as Muslim women, but we don't know how many of them actually think that Muslim, whatever form of Islam that they practice, is the primary identity through which they actually state who they are. They might say that their nationality is primary or that the language that they speak identifies them and makes them a part of, their, a part of the whatever community that they're a part of. It is dangerous to create monolith, monolithic entities such as the Muslim woman across geographical areas and historical times and contexts. The next point, because I've lost count at this point, whether this is first, second, or third, I do apologize for that too, I was never very good at math. Anyway, um, oppression. Okay, so here's the thing. Again, disclaimer. I am not saying that there is no lack of freedom of speech, community, religion, dress, opinion, assembly in various parts of the world. I'm Pakistani. I know. Not just that I'm Pakistani, also other parts of my identity also make me experience all these lack of freedoms. However, it is also important to remember that everyone has different ideas as to what freedom means. Everyone has different ideas as to what happiness means. And we have to be very careful when trying to go out and save other people. The British, when they colonized South Asia, were there to save, for example, Indian women from Indian men who were categorized as violent bar and barbaric while Indian women were categorized as helpless and constant victims. Saving has been a constant excuse and justification for colonialism and we have to be very very careful when arguing that different people need to be saved, that different others need to be saved. We need to pay attention and understand differences in context. This does not make me an apologist for cultural relativism. This does make me someone who would like to understand and actually know what the hell I'm talking about before I rush in with a gun to say Iraq or Afghanistan and attempt to save the victimized and victimized uh, Afghan women. I would refer to the book The Politics of Piety by Sabah Mahmood for an excellent, excellent analysis of Muslim Egyptian upper class women in Cairo who voluntarily form communities that they define as Muslim and who voluntarily wear different forms of covering which to them means that they are cultivating piety and modesty to demonstrate and cultivate their devotion to the God that they believe in. You cannot say that all of these women are misguided 
or victims or forced to conform on pain of death. This is denying them any sort of active agency and control of their destinies and painting them as all to be saved. To quote another theorist whom I love but is who is ridiculously complicated, it is the myth, the oppressed Muslim woman serves the myth of white men saving brown women from brown men. This is by Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak, who wrote Can the Subaltern Speak? I'm not going to go into it because it's hideously complicated and I wish it wasn't. But basically the point is, saving someone implies that your way of thinking and your way of living is superior. And that is very close to all kinds of misogyny, racism, homophobia, xenophobia, and God knows other kinds of homophobias. I think I'm going to stop ranting now. Moose, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you didn't, shame on you, you knee-showing, shameless hussy.